Atulele, is this a is this a company or is this just a holding company for Alibaba stock? Oh, look, at the moment, I think what we're seeing in Yahoo's earnings are similar to what we're seeing across the corporate landscape. And it's just a whole lot of one-offs occurring. You know, we're seeing spin-offs, we're seeing divestitures, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing tax inversion plays, we're seeing buybacks. What we really care about is what's happening underlying all that Thank through you. the cycle. You know? But, I mean, this is with Walter Isaacson on today. This is the difference between innovators. financial yeah. engineering, to yeah. your point of a holding company, versus actually doing something in technological progress. I think I mean, it's really telling that all the analysts in the lead-up to this earnings report, all they were focused on was the tax treatment of the windfall yeah. from the Alibaba sale. I mean, th that is not exactly stuff to get excited about. Mm -hmm. For the stock to really move at this point, it's how do they treat, what do they do with all that cash? that they got yeah. and also does the core business recover and right now that answer was right so if they handle so Yahoo Japan well and if they handle Alibaba well what then I mean really raise your hand if you can explain what Yahoo does in one sentence it's supposed to be a media company but that's a really yeah, big that is a great business right now <laughs> I mean I feel bad about this some of my best friends work at Yahoo but well, it's, some it's, of our best friends work in media there you go <laughs> that's uh, until Layla, when you look at a company like Yahoo, can a leader like Marissa Meyer make a difference or is this a sinking ship either way? Look, I think leaders can make huge differences to, to organizations, um, you know, whether it comes to Yahoo, whether it comes to Apple. You know, and, and going back to Tom's point, it's you need a leader who can actually innovate and look beyond and, and look at what they can do to grow the business through the cycle, not just at, at looking at okay, what they can do with, you know, on financial engineering. The heart of the matter is everyone agrees uh, Ms. Meyer is extremely competent and I would suggest has an ability to innovate or manage innovation. Where is that? Not only within Yahoo, but any other company like Yahoo. Look, in terms of where the innovation is coming uh, globally, I mean, we still think it's coming in the U.S., and that's why we want to be positioned towards technology, because if we don't get that innovation, then we're not going to get product. Can you get it at right? IBM? Look, at IBM right now, I would argue that that's more services-oriented, uh, so it's more just maintenance rather than innovation. But if we don't get the innovation that's coming out of the U.S., then productivity growth won't grow, and then we've got a real right. problem. Brendan, right, here's a chart on Yahoo. Let me bring it up here what are we looking uh, at? very quickly. The Yahoo chart, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's what it was, and then it's a cyclical churn. And to Ms. Meyer's great credit, up it goes recently. Schadenfreude, like you said. Schadenfreude. Well, I, what is the, what's that, what's I, I, what I want to what I want to understand it's is, German. you know, she said her strategy moving forward. They, they're going to have some cash uh, if they play the Alibaba sale right. Um, uh, and they, she wants to make acquisitions, which feels like sort of desperately grasping for ideas. Are there any acquisitions in the tech sector that to you make sense that work and aren't just sort of casting around to grab something that might make money in the future? Look, to us within the tech sector, we're really looking, we're very heavily focused at, at kind of tech hardware and equipment because that's the area that's going to grow. You know, if you're looking at things such as software and services, the PEs are quite high right now. And it's, you know, it's really an area which can be quite cyclical. When we look at things such as tech, hardware and equipment, that's really something which has an underlying growth story to it in that we are starting to see you know, businesses start to invest, businesses start to spend, and they're going to be spending on hardware more so than that we will be seeing spending on software, on services, on those types of things. And what you're saying comes straight out of your report from Monday, which is you, you offer a measure, uh, the, the PE compression. Uh, which is basically it's like a spring. If the P/E ratio uh, is it, it actually is stretched and becomes worse, you know in the future that it's going to snap back. And right now, uh, the biggest P/E compression or sorry uh, comes in tech, hardware, and equipment. Is that a measure you look at a lot? Yeah. So that's something that we've looked at really. And the reason we published that on Monday is, is we're basically saying, look, if the markets are going to bounce, you know, we, we're we're looking for an environment where we're going to see very unstable markets, volatile markets over the next quarter. Obviously, we've seen markets come down. If they're going to bounce, typically it's the stocks which have had the largest PE compression that are going to bounce back the hardest. But that doesn't always mean they're the ones that we want to invest in because often it's in sectors such as commodities where we've seen huge PE compression. But do we want to invest in commodities in an environment of slowing liquidity growth? Absolutely not. So we want to look at those sectors of experience, number one, PE compression because they've been oversold, and number two, are going to benefit when we start to see the growth cycle improve next year. You know, and that's where we look at sectors such as tech, hardware, semiconductors, mm. etc. Well, going back to Yahoo for a moment, uh, does the fact that Starboard investors, uh, activist investors, is so involved to make you want to invest in Yahoo less or more? Look, it doesn't. I mean, to us, it doesn't really move the needle in terms of what's happening from an activist investor's perspective, because that's really looking ultra short term and really looking at a series of catalysts. What we would rather be focused right. on, and as macro investors, what we'd rather be focused on is where's the cycle going, because that's something that's far more sustainable than what an activist investor does right. in the short term.